and welcome to the Minnesota Rocker Playoffs pre-show. My name is Ashley, aka Minnette. I'm here, as always, with Doug, or Esports Doug. He's been on, I think, every pre-show so far. And today, we have a new player entering the building. We've got Icon. Icon Nation uh, joins us today to get a little analytical with it and uh, get get hyped for playoffs, um, kind of go over the season and everything. So, so Doug, how are you doing? Uh, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm so glad to be back. It feels like, I think it was Icon actually who said it prior to the broadcast starting. We've been waiting for Call of Duty for what seems like three months. So I can't tell you how excited I am to finally get back into the fold, to finally get some action. And it's the most important action of the year. So it doesn't get any better. Absolutely. And, and Icon, welcome to the channel again. Thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super pumped. It seems like, again, it's been forever since we've actually got to watch some Call of Duty. So we're here, we're live, we're ready to go. Let's get it. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, we are live for the pre-show today. Today is actually the day that CDL playoffs kicks off. Now, Minnesota Rocker does not actually play today. We are in what you would call the winner's bracket. So, we actually play tomorrow, <laughs> August 20th at... I shouldn't have said the time. Uh, I think we play uh, at 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I might have gotten correct. that wrong. That's no, correct? that's correct. Yes, correct. let's go. I know the broadcast starts at 2 Central. So we play tomorrow, basically. Today's show, we're going to be kind of going over the whole season, just talking it up um, or talking about everything that's kind of happened. Um, you know, talk about the road that's led us here. I'm going to leave it up to Doug and Icon to kind of talk you guys through that. Um, but for, for now, just, you know, get ready, get hyped. The CDL broadcast does start soon, and I'm excited to see how today's matches go because it could have implications um, either for, for matchups that, that Minnesota Rocker has in the future or just any mm -hmm. any of the Saturday matchups really are going to be kind of created um, today. So I'm pretty excited for that. I'm going to let you guys kind of walk us through uh, a little bit of a look back at our season, and I'm just excited to kind of hear what you guys have to say. I'll be back towards the end of the show, but I'm excited to kind of listen to you guys chop it up because it's really been an insane season. Uh, it really has been. If you look at, like, how the roster was built like it's just been pure insanity from my perspective like I was a part of the the team that built the roster here at Minnesota Rocker so to now like be, be all the way here all the way towards the finish line we're almost there the, this is the tournament that everyone's been looking forward to in playoffs and just it's I, I'm gonna get emotional that's why I can't, I can't be on I'm gonna let you guys talk I'm gonna get <laughs> emotional do it. Talk do it. about it because I I've been a part of the whole journey and it's just I'm so so excited to see it kind of all hopefully come to fruition here at the end of the season so without further ado I'll kick it to you guys uh enjoy giving a look back at our season to the viewers Oh man, what a season. Yeah, what a season it's been, right? I kind of I'm haven't had the the privilege or the pleasure uh, of sharing a desk with you, but we have been fortunate to be able to see uh, the inaugural CDL season, you know, the franchising and, and the geolocating. And it was such a promising start uh, to the season, both for Minnesota and for CDL as a whole. Um, but, you know, there, there are people who are going to have opinions about whether or not online has had an impact on things and what have you. But let's start from the top, right? Let, let's start from the very beginning. Icon, were you at the launch weekend? Um, I was not there, but obviously, of course, everybody was watching it. This season as a whole, it almost feels like it's a season of thirds, right? That first third was mm -hmm. like the land events. Mm -hmm. After that, it kind of went online to like the middle, like the dog days of the season. And then we had the run up to playoffs. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, that first event launch weekend at Minnesota, it was just, it was so cool just to see how it was presented and, and the setting that was there at the armory. Um, just everything, how it started off, just a great start to the season. Yeah, and I, you know, actually, just earlier today, I happened to be looking back at pictures uh, of that event and reminiscing, and like the the stage and the crowd and the energy that was there, and to hear the armory, the entire armory chanting "Let's go rocker" was probably one of the coolest experiences I have ever had and have ever witnessed. And of course, the boys starting off the season two and zero. Oh, you know, you you remember when this roster got put together? Everyone was saying this roster really like this is maybe an average roster maybe a lower half of the league roster there wasn't a whole lot of excitement or a lot of energy around it i remember the preseason rankings i have them um, wonder if i can pull them up very quickly uh but the preseason rankings had minnesota not at dead last but really freaking close i think it was pretty low yep we they had them oh no sorry no no i lie it was halfway 
right right beneath New York. How ironic. Uh, halfway, but every they the boys came out and they rocked it. No pun intended. Uh, in their opening, right? Two uh, O performance. They looked good. They looked incredible. Yeah, they they came out. They played well. They got the three one victory over L A G. That was after they started off with the hard point loss. So. It was a little bit of a rocky kind of first map. But the thing that I, I enjoyed so much about that, and you were talking about the Let's Go Rocker chance, is just the fact that this is what franchising really brings to the table because mm -hmm. it seems like leading mm -hmm. up to this year, it was always like, let's go like the biggest teams, right? It was just always the biggest teams wherever you went. So when you have franchising like this at each locations, it's actually those players who might not have gotten those chance before get the opportunity to get those chance. So they got the victory over LAG, turn around, got the uh, another victory, 3-1 victory over Toronto. And for me personally, from like an analytical side, that was really what showed me that they might be a little bit ahead of the curve when it came to like mm -hmm. respawn game modes because out of the gates, like Dallas played really poor, right? They went 0-2 on that launch weekend and it just took them some time to, to grasp things and get into the swing of the season and the game and how young their roster was. But for Minnesota, they came out, they rocked it. They were 6-2 on map count that first weekend and they really just showed that, you know, we're ahead of the curve a little bit. Let's go out, let's get some CDL points. And they looked really good. And I, I think you touched on some of this icon, but Minnesota looked intelligent in how they played the game. It was very fundamental how they played it. It wasn't always flashy. It wasn't always, you know, whatever, but it was it was fundamental uh, in how they played. And, you know, we fast forward a little bit, move away from the excitement of that weekend and get on to week three, uh, which was their next, uh, Minnesota's next event, which was Atlanta. Yes, uh, Atlanta. And I, I think as good as they looked in week one, week three, because they had a bye week two, week three really, in my opinion, was like, all right, these Minnesota guys are the real deal, right? Like they beat Paris 3-1 and then they get bested uh, by Chicago, but then they take Atlanta to game five, right? And everyone's like, who the heck are these guys? Who are these guys that are pushing Atlanta to the brink and making them look human? And that was when I remember watching that series and thinking, holy smokes, they might do it. They might actually do it. Yeah, so it was interesting because that was like one of the biggest moments of the season, right? It was always like, all right, Atlanta, they're the number one team that basically everybody had coming into this. And they finally started to show that they were human a little bit. And it, it really opened the, everybody's eyes to what Minnesota was capable of. So they almost won that. They did won, They did lose the map five gunrunner search and destroy. Mm -hmm. But as yeah. we'll see a little bit later... It kind of went on to get their revenge when it came to CDL Los Angeles. Yeah, and so we had back uh, prior to the COVID era, uh, we had these watch parties at Billy's in St. Paul. Shout out to the guys at Billy's. Uh, I, re I distinctly remember that was the coolest moment of the season for me. And, you know, I know it's something we're going to touch on later, so I'm cheating a little bit here, but at that watch party... I remember that was the most electric crowd we had had. We had two rooms that were totally full. And to have, like, so we take care um, of Seattle early on, and then we get dropped to the loser's bracket, but then we sweep them again. Let's fast forward, right? We get to the to finals, to Sunday. We beat Atlanta in that rematch, like you touched on. And then we go into the finals against Dallas. And I remember this freaking packed bar where we're, cre we're chanting, Ra, Kerr, Ra. <laughs> Kerr from both sides, and I get chills still just thinking about it. Uh, that was hands down the funnest moment uh, of the season for me. Again, we fall a bit short, but reiterating once again, Minnesota's the real deal, right? Like, grand finals, they take down Atlanta, they push Dallas to the limit. Minnesota looks like they belong in the top three conversation. Yeah, to me... A thousand percent. That's exactly what I was going to say. It really did. Those last couple, those back to back finals, for me, it solidified that Minnesota was one of the top three or four teams in the league at that time. And and in my mind, it became a, a matter of when, not mm -hmm. if, right? Like, mm -hmm. when is Minnesota going to end up getting that ring? So, not if, well, maybe they can get it. Maybe, you know, all these different teams. It was like they 
they barely lost to Dallas. They turned around, barely lost to Florida and back to back grand finals. So it just seemed like they were so close. And it's like, okay, in competitive Call of Duty, it's like one decision here or there, and it's going to go their way. And as soon as it does, they're going to get their first championship. Now, now speaking of that, it, you touched on the back-to-back grand finals, which is nutty even to, to to think about and how long ago that seems. The second final in that back-to-back, uh, which was Dallas, yes. Dallas was the first one that goes online, right? Mm-hmm. And then we opens this narrative about online play and how it impacted things and, and what have you. But I kind of at this point, and you know, we can we can talk through really all of it, but I would love to hear from you. What was your favorite moment? Uh, of the season for me honestly so we only had a few events that were actual at lands like Mm -hmm. um like not online or whatever so for me my favorite moments were early on in the season right when things were in person when you had that london crowd when you had all these different crowds the la crowd stuff like that so for me and i don't know if it's just because it was the first one But just Minnesota's victories at the Armory that very first weekend, because everybody was tuning in. Nobody knew what the presentation was going to be like, you know, how things were going to be set up. When were the actual interview? Like there were so many unknowns. So for them to come out in such a big moment at kind of their, you know, I mean, it was their their home field advantage and to Mm -hmm. get two victories that for me is my favorite moment just because everything that surrounded it. I know it wasn't the most hype matchups, right? It wasn't Atlanta, it wasn't Dallas, wasn't somebody like that, but it was still the environment and the build up to the moment. And there were plenty of of moments, right? Between the beginning and the point in the timeline that we've hit uh, that were moments of joy, moments of euphoria, so to speak. And then something happened. Something happened. And I think Minnesota fans and, and Minnesota staff alike are still trying to figure out exactly what that was. But regardless of the reason, the season, the trajectory of the season for Minnesota Rocker took a drastic change, right? We go from back-to-back finals to week seven, where we lose to, I believe it was Toronto uh, early on. Yeah, in round two of group stages. And everyone's like, Toronto, wait, that's weird, right? Like at that point, Toronto hadn't, really performed very well. Uh, right. And it just kind of went from from bad to worse, really. Minnesota looked lost. They couldn't really figure out what was going on. There was a thumb injury uh, by Alex, and and it, it they never really pulled out of that tailspin. Yeah, for me, it wasn't necessarily a, a – it wasn't a case of Minnesota, like, you know, forgetting how to play or, or not mm-hmm. clutching up mm-hmm. like they were before. To me, it was just the fact that all the other teams were catching up. It, these guys are all pros and after they play for so long i mean they're watching vods every day they're seeing what other teams were successful at so at some point in time i mean the the parises the torontos you know those teams of the world they can only stay down for so long and that's kind of what we've seen here as of late in the build-up to champs that some of these teams like toronto are coming out of nowhere and they're beating top teams so for me when it came to Minnesota, yeah, of course they struggled online, but I just feel like they were so far ahead of the curve to start the season that other teams started to catch up rather than them really falling off. Hmm. Well, so the woes of Minnesota's season towards the tail end have been very well documented, and we can probably talk in nauseam about what's going on and and how they got to where they did. But the truth of the matter is we find ourselves where we are today on the brink of starting off the Cod League playoffs. And there's been a roster change, a roster change that has been controversial, uh, thought of as controversial by many, uh, as Goddard has been subbed out for Exceed. The squawk on the street is that the boys are frying uh, in scrims. Goddard was pulled out for Exceed, and Exceed seems to be adjusting very well. Their map count is nutty, but... That is still just scrims. Icon, your thoughts on Exceed in place of God RX and the impact that that's going to have going into the most important moment of the season. Well, it was all done for a pacing change, right? They wanted to get around the map quicker, as some teams are doing, of course, around the league. So that's kind of the reason why it happened. So for me, it just seems like Minnesota is the biggest unknown heading into the postseason because we've mm-hmm. never even mm-hmm. seen them. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen them in an actual tournament. We haven't seen them really even in scrims too much. So to me, they're it's super un, 
unknown, but I think it's probably going to go their way because, again, we touched on this earlier, how at the beginning of the year, they've been playing really well. As the season went on, it dropped off a little bit, and you saw that across the board with everybody's kill death, right? Got a Rex, who ended up being subbed out, started the year with like a 1.33 KD across all game modes. Yeah, it was, as, it was like, yeah, it how was, does he do that? Yeah. yeah, nobody at that point in time was playing that mm -hmm. well. But then as everybody else caught up, it just seemed like their slower pace, it didn't favor them getting inside hard points, getting map control, stuff like that. So for me, it's just, it seems like it's going well. It seems like in scrims, maps are really going in their favor, but it's a big unknown. We'll see what happens. And I mean, that's a, it's a great way to kick it off in a, in a matchup with the New York subliners. And the, the the performance as we near the end of the show here, um, I don't have full stats. I'm kind of I'm just scrambling to to pull them up as we're chatting. Uh, I I do know that the last couple of performances against New York have been lackluster uh, at best. New York went through a roster change, and they were the the new kids on the block, uh, and they were frying left and right. And and now they Minnesota. Uh, is going to have to try to fill the same role with the, the new roster and whether or not they can be able, to, they are, are going to be able to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We're going to break that match down um, a bit later on and talk through what that looks like. But folks, it's almost time. It is almost time. Uh, I'm not sure if Ashley's going to be joining us again here for the goodbye. Did you say it's almost time, Doug? I, uh, sure I've been waiting. Uh, dude, I'm so excited. So, obviously, this is the pre-show for the first day of playoffs. Like I mentioned at the start, Minnesota Rock actually does not play today. We play tomorrow. We'll have another pre-show for you. Two pre-shows in one event. It's playoffs, baby. We're turning up. Um, but, yeah, as Doug mentioned, we'll be playing tomorrow. We'll have another pre-show then. But right now, let's get some quick predictions before we throw it to the CDL stream. I'm, all, I'm, I'm rapid fire. There's only two matches. So, Doug, I'll, I'll throw to you first. Who wins in today's matchups? I believe we've got Seattle versus Paris. 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 Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we've got OGLA versus LAG. Real quick, rapid fire, guys. Doug, go. Who wins today? Optic over Gorillas, 3 1. And uh, Seattle over Paris, 3 2. All right. You heard it here first. What about you, Icon? Yeah, I think the the new roster for OGLA is more than LAG can handle. So I think it's going to be a 3-1 for OGLA. When it comes to Paris and Seattle, Paris looked really good in their last event. So they got wins over New York and London. I'm going Paris with the 3-1 also. Beautiful. I've got LAG uh, beating Optic. You heard it here first. I'm oh, wow. very biased. I just want <laughs> new optic to lose. Uh, and then I think Paris is going to come out 3-1 versus Seattle, and they'll be on their mighty way. Guys, go to the CDL stream. They are live now. The action starts today. And come in the Minnesota Rocker Discord. I'll be in there during our matches this week, and it's going to be a great time. I hope to see you guys there chatting, and we'll have some cool video stuff going on in there as well. So we'll see you guys there. Enjoy the playoffs. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Icon. Enjoy the playoffs day one, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time. Time, same place, same faces for another pre-show.